fundamental metric to rule them all, one, what would it be? Uh, I, there are no best practices. There are only good practices in context. You have to change up your metric system over time. These are just two reasons why I, I, I don't want to pick a single, single metric. There's a few that I go to a lot. Um, and I can definitely make qualitative judgments between two different metrics. So for instance, velocity, which is very common in the scrum world and is what was recommended, is recommended still today in the scrum world, uh, leads to point inflation and some unhealthy behaviors in the team. But a throughput metric, which is just the count of work items that finish in a given time period, um, actually motivates people to break the stories down smaller. So it leads to better behavior if you're going to game, game it. Um, whereas if you're going to game story points, velocity, you're going to have story point inflation. So I prefer throughput over, over um, velocity. So I can make judgment calls like that. There are a few cases where velocity might be better, but more cases where throughput is better. Great. Uh, you also, in your talk, talk about a cumulative flow diagram. Can you kind of quickly go over how do you even begin to create that? That sounds very fancy. Yeah, so um, I don't recommend that you create it yourself. So um, pretty much every Agile tool that's, you know, been, has a Kanban board is going to have a cumulative flow diagram available in it. So I recommend you use that in your Agile tool. If you do want to create it relatively by hand, let's say you have a physical Kanban board, um, then uh, there are tools that allow you to sort of input the data after the fact. Dan Vacanti has one, for instance, that does that. But it's actually really simple to, to calculate. It's, it's the count of the work items in, a ver in the various states at a given moment in time. So you just think of it as a stacked column uh, graph instead of a stacked area graph, and it makes it more sense to you. If you just count, there's three items uh, that have been deployed, there's two items that are in testing, there's five items that are in development, and there's 14 items that are in. So that would be one day, and then the next day, you redo that again and show the column next to each other, and you keep the bands the same, and the bands at the bottom will grow, and the bands at the top will shrink. Uh, what data can you extract from the flow diagram? Yeah, so the, 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 the beauty of the cumulative flow diagram is that several metrics become physically evident in the diagram itself. So um, time and process, which some folks refer to as cycle time or lead time, um, is, the ho is a horizontal measure of a given band or a given set of bands. Um, uh, whip, work in process, whip, is a vertical uh, in a given moment in time. That's how many things you have in process across the bands that you consider, the states that you consider in process. You can do uh, burn up series is the bottom series, the scope series is that top series. So you can actually do forecasting right on a cumulative flow diagram. It's an incredibly flexible and powerful visualization. Um, the main way it's used though is you're trying to make the flow be even. And so you're looking for the constant, relatively constant width bands across the cumulative flow diagram. That's the number one thing people use. In the